Women Taking the Lead, Episode 117. As a leader, I want to create an atmosphere, a culture, an environment that is feels supportive for the people that are within it. I also like to have a lot of fun because I believe that there's no point in getting to the end of our journey, whether it's in business, as a mum, in a relationship, if we haven't enjoyed the process along the way. I always say that success without happiness is not in fact success at all. Hello, my name is Jodi Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognize to reserve your spot in our upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work you do. Now, your future awaits. So let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Nick Pigeon, who helps women that are struggling with finding their self-belief to overcome negative self-talk, activate next-level breakthroughs in their life and businesses, and create their life of joy, personal power, and unstoppable success. Her signature 90-day Master Your Success Mentorship and Guru Girl Entrepreneur Mastermind combine the power of positive psychology with Nick's decade of experience of coaching women to create positive change to produce dramatic and long-lasting results. Nick is from the UK where she recently won Young Entrepreneur of the Year and is currently traveling the world speaking and coaching. She is founder of NickPigeon.com award-winning lifestyle brand, Optimally You, New Castle Park Run, and her first book, Now Is Your Chance, will hit the bookshelves in March 2017 with Hay House. Congratulations, Nick. That's amazing. And if you don't mind, because that was only just a little intro for everybody, tell us more about you and your own humble beginnings. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. It's great to be here. Absolutely thrilled to be joining you on the show today. So my humble beginnings, as you can probably tell from my accent, I am from the UK and I'm from a relatively small city in the north of the UK called Newcastle upon Tyne. So I grew up there. I was from, I'd say, a working to middle class background. My parents always worked really hard. And I think that's one thing that I grew up and I really had instilled into me was that work ethic, certainly from my dad from a very young age. So I grew up, I was very academic at school. I loved doing my homework. I was very, very studious. And I grew up and I I actually ended up getting bullied in high school, Jody. So I had a really bad time when I was around about 11 or 12. I got bullied in PE because I think that was the, the, the environment that wasn't as structured as those lessons in the academic environment. So I got really badly bullied to the point where I actually tried to take my own life as a child at that age. And my parents pulled me out of school and I was homeschooled for six months before I could find a place in another school. So from that time, I I did have a lot to overcome. I remember feeling one of the worst times that I've felt in my life and really having to find that courage in myself as a child at a very young age to to carry on and to move forwards and to keep going with the things that I love and I think that's something now having grown up and really grown into myself I look back and I look at how hard it is for kids at school and how hard it is for them to find their path and their direction and their journey and all of the different adversities that we face at such an early stage on our journey Oh my God, Nick, you've just like floored me. I had no idea because we've had a chance to chat before you came on the podcast and you're so vivacious and so um, effervescent. You're so (laughs) full of life. And I have to admit as an auntie, (laughs) it's really hard for me to even think about that, that a child would be bullied so badly at the age of 11, 12, that they would think that it's not worth living any longer. It's so bad here that I don't want to do this anymore. And what it must have taken to come back from that and really um, turn that around. That's, that's just unbelievable. Absolutely. Looking back, it was a really hard time. But I think it gives you so much strength and Even as a positive psychologist, I understand and I know and I believe and I teach that it's not 
just the good things that bring us joy and bring us learning and bring us growth. It's actually the hard times that we go through as well. And we need to see the value in the negative as well as in the positive. Because I know that if that hadn't of if I hadn't have experienced that, I wouldn't have the strength of character that I do today. Yeah, so true. It makes perfect sense why you're you actually discovered positive psychology as it was emerging. Mm. It's relatively new and you've been studying it for quite some time. Um I, I love, I just, oh my gosh, you're so right. It's so true. We oftentimes want to forget the bad things that happened in life and the struggles, but those are the things that actually, I know in my own experience, birthed a new me at that time because I had to grow. I had to really grow fast and stretch myself. And what emerged was like a whole new version of myself. I was still me, but someone I probably wouldn't have become mm-hmm without that experience. Mm, Completely. Um, I think it gives you such an opportunity for personal development because you're really forced to take a look at yourself and take a look at your life and start to explore what does feel good. So in the times that we feel bad, what does feel better and what's the next step that we can take to allow ourselves to feel better? Is it giving ourselves a positive focus? Like, I knew for me at that time, it was really my schoolwork, making new friends. If you experience something in your business, it might be finding a positive part of your business that you really love and enjoy. It might be surrounding yourself by people that make you feel really good and the people that give you that belief in yourself again. So I think it's really important to look for like the next positive step that we can take. Mm, I love that. And, I, and I've and i talked with others on this show about how, you know, just even um, experiences with bad bosses mm-hmm. are very beneficial because we learn exactly who we do not want to be as a leader. Right. Oftentimes people learn more about themselves and who they want to be as a leader by recognizing out in the world what they don't want. That's so and- true. So, you know, when we have these bad experiences, we know exactly like for you, I can imagine, you know, exactly how you want to treat people and how you want to leave people feeling after having an experience with you because you had such a negative experience being treated horribly that that's probably a passion of yours, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. So I I was always the the nice kid at school and then I grew up and built a career in happiness. So it's (laughs) it's a perfect fit, really. But I always think that we should, I mean, it's a historical teaching, whether it's through religion, whether it's through parents teaching us, whether it's through grandparents passing down wisdom. We're always taught to treat people in a way that we would like to be treated. And sadly, Mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen because human nature is such that We might become selfish or we might react to a situation rather than thinking, first of all. But the more mindful we can become and the more awareness that we can create for ourselves, the better we can be for other people, but also for ourselves as well. So I think it's about treating other people with care, with love, with respect, with dignity, with gratitude, but also remembering that we need to have that relationship with ourselves first. So true. Well, gosh, Nick, you clearly are experiencing success in your life. You've definitely gained confidence from those early years. But take us back to a time when you were playing small and you may not have been aware of it at the time. Share with us the story and the lessons you've learned. Oh, goodness. So I think going back to when I first started my career, in personal development, I actually began as a personal trainer and I would push myself so, so hard and the the income wasn't great, but I was doing something that I loved. But I got myself to this place where I felt stuck. I felt like I was doing as much as I possibly could in my days to the point where I was getting up at five in the morning. I was going to work with clients. I was also studying at university. I was then going back to work in the evening because I was so dedicated and so determined to create a life that I love to live, doing something that helped other people and that I really enjoyed as well. But that came at a detriment to myself and my own health. And I think I was stuck in a mindset of scarcity and I was stuck in a mindset of lack and thinking that I was almost like a a victim, like 
life was hard, things weren't possible, and I had to struggle. So I was stuck playing small because I, I gave struggle the strength and I accepted struggle and I thought that that was normal. I saw people around me struggling. I heard my parents saying money doesn't grow on trees. I heard all sorts of things that I, I think in society we don't realize that we're even actually saying. It's almost like a habit that we say these things and they over time become ingrained in our mindset and in our subconscious so that we start to believe them. So I think for me, I was stuck in a mindset that kept me playing small. And I think that's really what allowed me to change and move out that out of that space. When I started working on my mindset, started working on myself, then that smallness was allowed to develop into greatness. Mm. And Nick, what were some of the things that you did? Because that was really great that you were able to identify those thoughts as being optional, right? Because I think a lot of people don't realize that that that's programming, right? Those things, money doesn't grow on trees. Mm. That's programming. We learn our parents learned it, their parents learned it, and we just keep passing it on. Um, but it's a mindset that implies lack, you know, and that there's a limit and you can only have so much and you you have to work really, really hard and make terrible sacrifices in order to be successful. But you were able to identify that this is just programming. I can change my thoughts and that's going to change the results that I get. What were some of the practices you put into place to start identifying and changing th those thought patterns? So first of all, I started to read a lot. So back at the start of my journey, I mean, it was over 10 years ago now when I started in personal development and I started reading books that inspired me, even just little quotes. I mean, at the time, social media wasn't as huge as it is now. Nowadays, we're very blessed because we can open up our phones and we can look at Facebook or Instagram and we can see a positive quote or something that is supporting our well-being. We can listen to podcasts. But 10 years ago, it was more focused on books more focused on reading and then applying those things into your life. So I started reading first of all, I then started doing a lot of research into what was possible from a psychology career. So I studied and through my study of psychology, I learned a lot of the interventions and the practices that I could put into place. And I think it was a combination of my own research and reading, whether it be online or through books, and also applying the teachings that I learned from my academic work as well. I did used to be very, very, very academic, and I used to think it's all about the theory, and I didn't really feel comfortable with sharing my personal experience at all. But what I've learned through my entrepreneurial career is that it's your personal experience where you learn the most, and it's mm -hmm. other people's personal experience that you can learn the most from as well. So I think that comes into play where it's not a case of just reading the book or just learning the theory. It's actually understanding how we can apply that into our own lives. So through a, a morning mindset ritual, through a gratitude practice, through deciding that every single day you're going to wake up and you are going to choose to accept the highest thought or emotion in any different situation or experience. Mm, and what I'm hearing and what you're saying as well is it's really important for everyone to recognize what inspires them mm. because it's very personal and to don't just read it, don't just get inspired by it, but think of how you can put it into practice. Yeah. So you can have the experience of it and not just the thought of it. Yeah, that's so important because it's very easy to read a book and then put it down and almost forget what was in the book. You, I love making notes on books, putting post-it notes in there, maybe underlining things, just so the real important points really sink in. I think as well, this we can really notice this when you go to a seminar or you go to a lecture and you enjoy the lecture and you feel inspired and you, you have all of this new information and then you close your notepad, your notepad goes on a shelf and you never look at it again. So I always like to do some sort of reflection whether it's on a podcast or a book or a coaching session, I would encourage myself, I would encourage my clients and also your listeners and your community to just say to yourself after any learning experience, okay, so what was the biggest takeaway from that? What was the biggest thing that I 
gained or learned or understood from that and how can I put that into practice in my life to take me a step closer to where I want to be. I love that. All right, Nick, now share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake up call. Take us back to that moment and share with us the steps you took that led to your success. I had a huge wake up call last year. So in June of last year, I decided to leave the UK to head over to Australia for some lovely sunshine to write my first book in the sun in Brisbane. And I'd taken two months off from my business to write so I could have the time and that space to dedicate to it. And I knew that it would be okay because I had savings in the bank and I was launching an online group program at the end of that two month gap. And I knew it was going to be a success because I'd worked so hard on it for six months with my assistant and we developed this amazing program that could really help people. When I went to launch the program, I had a grand total of one sale and wow. <laughs> yeah, one person in a group program is not a group. So it was real panic and fear that set in. As the weeks went on, the, I think I maybe got one or two more sales, but it was not the launch that I'd hoped for. So I was now by this time on the other side of the world. I had sold my car. I'd moved out of my apartment and I was faced with the prospect of getting a job which my brother was telling me to do. So my brother and my family were saying, Nick, you can't do this anymore. You need to just get a job. You can't be an entrepreneur. You can't be a leader. You need to just get a nine to five job. And that didn't sit right with me at all. It made me feel sick to my stomach to think of giving up on everything that I'd hoped and dreamed for. So I decided that I needed to stay true to what I taught to my community and clients. And that was to never abandon yourself, to always back yourself and to believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then nobody else is going to believe in you. So I would put in my headphones and I'd go for walks. I would listen to podcasts. I would read. I would fill myself with as much positive information and support that I could. I also hired a coach to work with to help me to grow from where I was to where I wanted to be. And I created a, a mantra for myself at that time because the fear that I was feeling, I thought initially that it was a fear of failure. I thought the fear was that the program wouldn't work and I wouldn't get this income that I desired and I wouldn't be able to do what I wanted. But when I really uncovered what the fear really was underneath, it was a fear of being visible. It was a fear of putting myself out there on social media and through my email marketing and saying, this is me, this is my program, this is who I am, this is how I help people. And it was the fear of being judged. And I think this comes up again and again when I work with ladies. They're nervous to put themselves out there to say, this is authentically me, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, then you can lump it. I think there's such a, a fear and an anxiety surrounding that. And I really had to make the decision that that wasn't going to get in my way. So I went full steam ahead. I went all in. I decided to come up with an affirmation to support me in this. So I used, I am fearlessly visible and I boldly shine my light. And I put that on a notice board in my bedroom and I looked at it every single day. And I used that to really support my mindset and moving forwards. So for me, it was my own um, decision to overcome the fear, putting in a mindset practice to support that and also working with a coach that really made a difference for me. And that allowed me to um, launch my successful coaching business and grow from having nothing in the bank. I actually was at minus 800 pounds because I had to borrow money to invest in the coach. And I went from that to a six figure business in three months. Wow. That is amazing. And it, you know, in the end result, like the action you took, like there were practices you put into place that supported you, but the action you took was you were bold in declaring, I can help you. I can, if these are your problems, these are the, your concerns, these are the things you're dealing with, this program will change your life. Absolutely. And I think there'd been a fear in the past of saying what I was selling and what I was sharing because I didn't want to seem salesy. So I'd mm -hmm. done a lot of groundwork over the, the two years previous with my business of giving out free content, giving out free blogs, 
but never actually having a, a solution that created a result for people. So it was all very good and it was very nice and it was good value content. But in terms of creating a, a start point and an end point in a program, I never had that before. So this allowed me to really help people in the most powerful way possible. That's amazing. And for someone who had a background of being bullied, that must have been very scary when you realize, like, I'm afraid of being visible and having people taunt me. Mm. And what's really interesting as well is that when I remember recording a video back, it must have been at the beginning of last year, I was recording a video and I mentioned the bullying in the video. And I actually felt scared to put the, put the video out. Even 15, 16, 17 years later, there was still that tiny piece of me that felt that fear. But when we feel these fears, I always think that they're an indicator of a piece of growth that's about to occur. It's an indicator that something better is on the other side. And a lot of people, it's very easy to get caught in fear and it can be so paralyzing. You feel the fear and then you get stuck. What I think is so important to encourage everybody that's listening is to use that fear as a positive stimulus. Use that fear as something that's exciting. Ooh, goodness, I feel the fear, but this means that something good's about to happen. So let's go with it. Let's move past it. Let's enjoy it. Let's even get excited about it because we know that something good's about to occur. Absolutely. And I found in in my business that sometimes when I share it openly, like I was freaked out to even talk to you today, right? You know, especially when I'm doing a speaking engagement, you know, yesterday was a nightmare because I got so nervous about it. But then the pra- when I convey the practices I put into place to calm myself down and to focus and to then just deliver what I needed to deliver, I think people can relate to that when you share your vulnerability. Like, I'm not perfect. I'm not speaking from the mountaintop. I actually, j- I feel the fear that you feel I've just developed some practices that help me to manage it. So then I can take the action I need to take and you can do this too. Yeah. Because then everybody's human. Yes. Yes. We're all very, very human. <laughs> so <laughs> amazing, Nick. And what I want everyone to get is there's no way to one way to lead right there. I think sometimes we get tripped up when we we have this notion in our heads of what leadership is and what a leader looks like. And it's only one version of it. And we try to become that. And that's when we get tripped up because it's not necessarily a version that works for us. So what I want everyone who's listening is to hear as many different leadership styles as possible so they can, you know, relate to the ones that feel right for them. Now, of course, there are always things in common, like when you're a leader, you have to be a good listener and you have to work on developing relationships. But there are nuances to leadership that I want to pull out. So, Nick, how would you describe your leadership style? So I'd say my leadership style is definitely a combination between strength and love. I always like to lead from a a loving heart with Um, joy and inspiration because as a leader I want to create an atmosphere a culture an environment that is feels supportive for the people that are within it I also like to have a lot of fun because I believe that our journeys wouldn't be there's no point in getting to the end of our journey whether it's in business as a mum Um, in a relationship if we haven't enjoyed the process along the way I always say that success without happiness is not in fact success at all and I really try to lead with that I really try to balance the the hard work ethic and the success side of things with the joy and the happiness and fulfillment as well Mm -hmm. wouldn't the world be a different place if we all had that definition of success that success without happiness is not success at all yeah because I think a lot of times we're striving for success and we find ourselves miserable at certain points along the way. And so that's a good check in like, okay, if what I'm doing right now is causing me misery, then I'm not moving towards success, I'm moving away from it. So I need to rebalance that. And the other thought that came to me is, you know, when you come from a place of not just strategy, but more trying to create an experience or a feeling for yourself and the other person, like you were saying, love and support and fun, you know, who you are for each individual in each situation is adaptive. 
you know, because you're just going to bring forth what that situation needs to create that experience. So that must, you must find yourself like, uh, this is what I imagine. You must surprise yourself on occasion with where did that come from? Yeah, absolutely. And I think as leaders, we are, we're so lucky to be inspired and have intu- intuitive thought and be able to create for ourselves and for the people that we work with. Because sometimes it isn't always about um, overthinking things. It's about leading from your heart and leading with that intuition and inspiration. And when you do that, it comes from a much better place. Yeah, I find I always provide what the situation needs when I'm really listening, not just to the other person, but what to what my intuition is telling me. You know, whether it's saying push harder or it's saying take a step back and, and give them more compassion. You know, I, I always find like the right thing occurs when I'm really paying attention and and really checked in to what's going on in the situation for the other person, for myself. Um, and that leadership style that you described, you just can't go wrong with that. You just can't go wrong because you can always provide more. Yeah, I agree. And I agree with what you said as well about listening. I think that's so important. And so often we listen to respond to somebody. We're listening for what they say. And then we're thinking about what we can say in in response, when really we need to listen to understand instead, listen to understand what the other person is saying, even if the words that they're saying might not be fully expressing what they want to say, understanding that there's more that we can get from that person in order to be able to help them more powerfully when we listen fully and we listen like you said to them and what they're saying but also to yourself as well Mm, right there's two people in the Mm. conversation (laughs) all right Nick what's one thing you're working on right now that you're really excited about so at the moment I'm in the editing process for my book now is your chance so that's going back and forwards between Hay House and I And that's a 30-day guide to living your happiest life using positive psychology. So I'm really, really excited for that to hit the bookshelves. And we're also working on a TV series at the moment as well. So Nick TV or Happiness TV, it's still in creation at the moment. But that's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time to be able to share my message far and wide. Oh my gosh. And when those are ready to go, because I know you're sharing things that are coming, they're not ready yet, but when they're ready, loop back around because we can add them to the show notes and I can blast out to everybody who's been listening to this episode. It's ready. It's here. It's here. So they can check it out. Thank you so much. (laughs) All right, Nick, now I'm going to do a quick leadership roundup. So tell us what is one practice that you have that helps to make you a better leader? definitely my morning mindset ritual. So every single morning I work on my mindset and I exercise. So by building a strong body and a strong mind, you're able to go out there and seize the day and be a powerful, strong leader that's coming from the right place. And what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? A book that I would recommend, it's a, it's a staple book, I believe, for leadership. It's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And it really is a traditional classic book for leadership. But I think there's so many teachings in there that are really important for us to not just learn, but for us to continually refresh and reinforce as leaders. Mm -hmm. And one practice somebody shared with me recently that they took on out of reading this book is every day of the week, reflecting on one of the habits and working on um, just being a little bit better at that habit on that day. So that over time, they've just gotten better and better at each of the habits because they keep bringing it around and practicing that muscle. So I love that you've recommended this book. Yeah. And Nick, what advice would you give your younger self? I'd go back to that time where I was 11 or 12 and I would tell myself that no matter what happens along the way, that it's always going to work out all right. I think focusing on a bigger picture and looking and expanding our vision is really important because it allows us to let go of any anxiety or stress that's associated with the minute details of the present. It allows us to see that in, in five years time or 10 years time, this thing that we're worried about right now probably won't even matter to us. So true. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, Nick, now share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. Okay, so one that I created this week that I'm going to be sharing through social media, which I love, is find fulfillment in the joy of your journey. So enjoy every day. Understand that the journey is as valuable or more valuable than the end goal. And we're here to experience the fullest out of life that we can to take and to give as much as we can in our moments and our situations and our experiences. Love it. And lastly, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? So I'm on Facebook as Nick Pigeon. I have my online Facebook group there, which is filled with 1,500 female entrepreneurs. And that's called Now Is Your Chance. I also really love Instagram as well. So I'm on Instagram at Nick Pidge. Love it. And for those of you who are listening, Nick is spelled N-I-Y-C and pigeon is the spelling of like the bird, pigeon. It's got a D D in it as well though for pigeon. So it's D-I-D-G-E-O-N. D-G-E-O-N. Okay. (laughs) And for those of you who are on the run or in the car, don't worry about this because you can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at womentakingthelead.com. And Nick, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life? Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognized to reserve your spot in my upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work that you do. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me, and here's to your success.